Hello everyone, Dominic here, back with another delayed episode of the Boomer and the Zoomer. Apologies, I've been so frantically busy. We're going to try and do this once a month, uh, Bryant Knife. It's get it regular, like that, yeah. but every week or every two weeks was probably a bit too ambitious a target for me, just with everything I have on. But things should ease up a little bit for me after April with the work that I have on, so I'm hoping we'll be able to do more but it's a pleasure to be with you as always Nathan how are you doing doing good I'm doing good I'm a little bit dopey is the word I think tonight I'm, I don't know we, it's, it's Monday it's is it what do you call it it's not good good Monday is it what do you call it Easter Monday Easter Monday yeah we'll keep it simple <laughs> <Good Monday. laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so yeah we've just come off uh, a four-day weekend me and Don have been speaking I've had it pretty chill Don's had a busy four-day weekend um, but I'm pretty dope I've had a lot of sleep I've been relaxing not a lot of work which is good um, so I'm still like in chill mode um, really ready for a hectic tomorrow um, so apologies if I come across like just really out of it today but um, hopefully this conversation will get me get me raring to go again <laughs> it'll be a nice relaxing yeah chat. I think so yeah well it's, <laughs> Uh, to be fair, we had a beefy topic that we avoided today. Um, so yeah, me relax. I w couldn't wouldn't have been able to relax talking about that. But we've got some we've got some pretty good topics today. The last one's a little bit spicy, but I think we've got some good topics. Um, talk about topics. Let's cover them. So we've got the three top three main topics on the agenda for today is Smurfs. Um, to give context, we'll give context again when we bring it up. Is um, Smurfing is when you play at a when you're a high level player playing at a, low, a lower level, basically playing against players that are far worse than you, I guess is, is the way of putting it. Um, so yeah. you put, it puts them at an unfair disadvantage um, and it puts you at an unfair advantage because you're usually a second account. Yeah, right. yeah, to be clear, yeah, of course. Um, second topic is academy teams. Um, so this recently came up in the UK League of Legends scene. Uh, we'll, talk, we'll talk about it a little bit more in depth, really, but it's basically should these semi-professional teams or should teams have academy teams in different leagues and should that be allowed because they're taking up another spot that could be filled by another organisation. Um, and then the last one, which is a little bit spicy, I think, is second chances. So it's slightly, look wrongdoers within the esports space do they deserve a second chance uh we'll give a direct yes or no answer when we get to it uh, but let's break it down with a bit more context when we get to it but yeah that's what you can look forward to in today's episode this week's episode this month's episode whatever we however often we do these this is basically monthly at the moment isn't it Relaxed, basically isn't it yeah, yeah it's pretty much monthly um it's been a busy 2021 to be honest though, hasn't it so far and i thought it was going to be pretty chill not chill but less stressful than 2020 but it hasn't been um <laughs> which is good that's fun uh, honestly i think the covid situation has made things busier for yeah. everyone in our line of work we're in this digital world and esports anyone doing you know online work i mean most people are now mm. i just feel like my workload's increased you know, it's a people, good when there's events you know you can go to an event and you know maybe your boss will be a bit relaxed or Know, to get this done because you're working at an event yeah it's weird isn't it because i don't know about you every time i tell people i work in game and esports they're like oh your industry's done really good then in covid hasn't it it's like yeah it hasn't it hasn't um because mm. i don't want to I, I i can speak for myself yeah it's been great for myself of course it has i can just look from my perspective of course but a big portion of our industry is events driven um and they've suffered quite a bit luckily after a couple of months we kind of picked up how to do proper good online events and how to you know keep keep these people busy um but there's still a lot of people that have lost their jobs um unfortunately uh, and look we don't i don't want to talk about it too much but activists in blizzard how many people they just get rid of and they've basically said we're not doing real life events anymore uh, for, mm. for for this year which is mental um don't don't agree with a lot of things they do honestly when it comes to their, their bloody franchise leagues but we won't we won't jump into that um so yeah it's like it, it has for another time yeah i i'm super even on the british esports association stream i did make clear to elliot i was like do you want me to be passionate about how i speak about them because i'm i can be <laughs> you know they're, they're not they do roll me up a little bit um with the decisions they make but they've basically dedicated themselves saying look we're not going to do real life events this year and it's like mm. okay um nice <laughs> Good job, we, I will um, say I'll put a link in the description here or whoever Nath, you put it in or I put it in because you did that interview with British Esports about being a social media manager yeah things. so if people are the interested joys. in listening to talk about that go check that out as well the joys of that eh? <laughs> but yeah no, uh, so yeah we God, we've already gone on a tangent, Tom. We've already gone on tangents. I know we have, yeah Smurfs yeah Smurfs <laughs> right back on track Smurfs what are your thoughts on it Tom? 
What are your yeah, thoughts on Smurfs? Uh, initially, if you'd have asked me sort of, I don't know, six, seven years ago when I first got into League of Legends and I was climbing the rank ladder for the first time, I used to get really frustrated with Smurfs. But having consumed so much League of Legends content over the years and coaching tips and all these all this great content that's out there now um i've taken on board the mindset of you know league of legends is a 5v5 game you're only one person out of 10 you can only have a small impact well you you, you know you can only you're one in 10 people right so you are of course going to have a small impact compared to the whole all the other nine people so when you have a smurf on the enemy team there's nothing you can do about it just carry on playing your game and then of course you'll you'll get games where you have a smurf on your team, but of course we forget those games where you get stomped. You're more likely to remember human nature. You're more likely to remember uh, negative things and disappointments and so on. So I can get why people do smurf. Um, and for, we were saying as well, for some people, it's part of their job, right? A lot of streamers or content creators have smurf accounts to you know, to practice games or play with other content creators or sometimes just make it look like they're amazing and a certain build is overpowered, but they're playing in a lower elo than what they usually are. And also pro players have smurfs as well, right? Because they want to, yeah, it's just good to have multiple accounts if you're a pro player, I guess, right? You don't want to use your same name yeah. and people see who you are and, oh, look, I'm playing against Faker. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's camp him yeah. and play silly or run it down or whatever you know i also think an overlooked um and you may not understand it some people may miss it uh because they don't follow a lot of league of legends pros is the reason they have smurfs is because most of the time once you're at that challenger level you're waiting 30 40 minutes for a game and mm -hmm. they just can't wait they they can't be asked for that as simple as that mm -hmm. you know they want to play as much league of legends as they want 40 minutes is a game you can fit two games if you if, if you really push it um in 40 minutes waiting waiting for q and all you're going to do in that 40 minutes is wait to play against absolutely incredible players at that level. So is that fun for them? Do you know what I mean? Is do you want do you want to wait 40 minutes for a possible yeah. troll to come in because look, trolls happen at every single level and we deal with them a lot in our elo unfortunately, our silver to gold elo. Um but imagine if that happens at challenger. Imagine waiting 40 minutes just to get some dick on your team that's had his champion banned and he's just going to run it down. That's a waste of your time then you wait another 40 minutes for your next game. It's ridiculous, do you know what I mean? So I get it. I get it uh, why they have Smurfs. It just frustrates me personally because, like you said, you're right. You're a bit more if if it, if it touches you and it, if it affects you, then you're going to be way more personal about it and a bit, a bit angry about it. Um, is why do it in silver and gold? That's what I don't understand. Why do Smurfs come down to that level? I get it if you like. I'm talking maybe so it goes plat di diamond plus. I understand because you can still get really good. You can still get really quick lobbies um, in diamond plus, but silver and gold what are you doing like why would anyone that's diamond plus be playing in silver and gold why we're, we're terrible players <laughs> we're, just, we're not like we're, like, we're, we're not that bad um but talking about a stomp like you're just playing against people far 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 worse than you what, what's the fun of that i've never understood that because i play league for the competitiveness of it i like having a good matchup like a close game there's nothing better when I'm playing with Genjin, it's like a 40 minute game. It could go either way. We make a good play and we win the game. There's nothing better than that. So why play against players that are like far worse than you? I I've never understood that. No, it's, it's I don't strange. know if it's a power trip or whatever it is. Mm. I will say the reason we're talking about this is, oh, I don't, I don't think we mentioned it. Yeah, of course. Good concept. Valve are stamping down on Smurfs, right? So they're going to be, there's a big focus on banning new accounts created from uh, whenever it was a few weeks ago onwards. And they're looking to clamp down on those selling or boosting accounts, mm -hmm. which if they find out if you've been selling or boosting yeah. accounts, you can get your main account banned as well. So I think that's quite interesting, this, this big clamp down that they're doing. And ELO boosting is sort of intrinsically linked with Smurfs, right, Nathan? You'll mm -hmm. get, if, if someone wants to, wants to Smurf and they don't want to level up a new account to level 30 in League of Legends, they can just go on a website and buy a level 30 account, oh, yeah. ranked account or bronze silver account for, you know, their pittance. They're like five pound, 10 pounds, something like that. And I've did a whole article on ELO boosting a few years ago and it still gets impressions, you know, decent impressions month on month because people are searching for ELO boosting. And yeah. I had, I spoke to people, you know, a lot of people who 
Dewey Lobustin wouldn't talk to me on the record. <laughs> but some of them said they make quite good money from oh. it or used to make decent money from it. Yeah. And uh, it happens in a lot of games. Right, the whole term boosted. Oh, you boosted, yeah. and you shouldn't be in that elo because you're you're rubbish. You don't belong in that yeah. elo. I've seen it all games. Overwatch, any game with a rank system, will have some. I've seen. I, I'm playing Hearthstone quite a bit lately, just because it's an easy pick up and play. I play it on my phone. I, you know, if at the start of the season, you get reset again, right, and you're at bronze ten, or I go back down to bronze ten again, <laughs> and some of the some of the. Uh, people you come up against you know they're pretty good or they're using a deck that mm -hmm. uh is from a streamer but i've seen streamers i've seen their content when, when they're testing out new decks these, some of these streamers are legend rank you know top top ranks in Hearthstone, and i can see when they're testing out decks they're playing in bronze yeah oh, really right yeah that's yeah that's why um, like, <laughs> they're just they're just yeah. you're playing against shit players like what's the fun of that do you know what i mean yeah, and it might be that, oh, Dom, they, the rank's reset, right? Because it resets every month in Hearthstone. But then if you've got to a certain rank, it helps you get there quicker than yeah. other players. But you could say, why are they not doing those decks at that Legend rank, yeah. right? Because then that truly shows. It's just weird, isn't are. it? Yeah, it's it's frustrating at the lower levels. I can understand what they I can understand why they do it, right? Especially League of Legends. Like I said, the queue time is ridiculous. Um, there's no fun from a content perspective playing against players that are equally the same level of you really sometimes it is like clash is, is a good example like that i like a bit of competition people like competition mm. hence why you play league of legends um that's what this whole industry is about really uh but yeah there's no fun in you can't get fun highlights when you're playing against a player better than you because they're not going to do something stupid or they're not going you're not going to be able to outplay them so there's no fun in that you see these highlight videos that are super popular on um uh, on YouTube that I watch every day, to be honest, when I'm, when I'm having my lunch, and they're mainly just streamers, content creators doing like funny outplays or good mm -hmm. clips. Like that's not because they. are Sometimes it is, but that's mostly not because they're playing against the same level of players as them. You know what I mean? That's mostly because they're playing at a lesser level. Um, yeah. But it's different. Like you said, League of Legends is a weird example because sometimes yes look in silver gold one player and most it can be any elo to be honest one player can absolutely carry can 1v9 and just win the game by itself most of the time though especially you keep that person somewhat on a leash so they're not just going mental um you you can you can numb down the rest of their team by just killing that one person look if it's an assassin like eve or, or uh, kozix then make sure that the rest of the team is like shit you kill that carry what the rest of the team are going to do then you know what i mean it's over um so it is, it is still a team effort but it's just it just makes yourself feel a bit shit when you when you come up against the laner you search up their record see what they're playing you've seen that okay last a month ago they didn't get a single kill on league this month they get in 20 plus kills every game it's like where's that come from <laughs> you know what i mean have you just switched yeah. on switched on the light in your head where's that come from or is it a different person on your account let's be honest it's, it's the latter yeah right? it's just That's hard it's it's so obvious and um i think when Riot... they switch summoner spells right yeah, you can see in the match if it's yeah. flash on d and and smite on f or whatever the summoner spells it's are and then it obvious. suddenly swaps yeah. right and their win rate changes or mm -hmm. the, the the main player changes like they've gone from playing trindamir top to i don't know ezreal adc hilarious. picking up yeah. wins they don't hide it but this is a thing like valve good job on breaking down it good job Good luck though at the same time because good luck on, on enforcing that that's hard and i think that's why a lot of companies shy away from it because it's a hard thing to do um have they really said how they're going to do it because how do you know if someone's got two accounts do you do, you do the simple i guess ip tracking is that the only thing you can do like what have they said how they're going to do this yeah that's a good point actually now if i've skimmed through an article um they're, they're looking for suspicious smurf behavior got you okay right so that's but there might be another article where it's actually gone into uh you know more detail but they'll probably they probably don't want to say publicly right? yeah because yeah, people, people get play around ways around it yeah that makes sense but it, you see a lot of companies just don't care do they they clearly don't care because if we can access a website and buy an account they can bloody see it too so why are they not doing anything about it do you know what i mean they have the money and the power to get rid of it i, just, I don't know why they don't i have to say it might be with Riot as well. When I did that article on Eli Boosted, um, you know, Riot have clamped down on some mm. services on the past, but I think they know that pro... They must yeah. know pro players and streamers 
have I've second spent, account. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's I mean, not. I don't think. I don't. I don't think in their rules, it says anything about second accounts. Um, right. I think in the rules yeah. it says you can't buy or purchase an account yeah, or share. Yeah, you know? yeah, and that's where okay. If, if find them, let's let's leave Smurfing. They definitely they have it. I know they have a two step for Clash. I don't know if you've ever dealt with it, they ask for your phone number to like yes. ensure that your phone number is not connected to any other account, which is fair, but it's still not really a solution because I've entered my phone number on multiple different accounts too. So it's like, what what's the point of asking for your phone number? It's strange. Um, yeah. And you still meet Smurfs in Clash, anyways, regardless, because you can decide. That will stop account. bots. Yeah. Probably with, well, possibly with a phone number. I've come up against bots in ranked. Oh, yeah. just, only once or twice, mm. like bizarre. That's I was weird. a jungler. And my mid laner said, This enemy Lux is the worst player I've ever seen in the game. And I watched the VOD back. And you could tell because Lux, well, it, they were either a brand new player, which they mm. can't have been because it was like low goal yeah. you can't go I don't believe oh, yeah, you, you can go know, straight you know, from you level 13 to goal and, and they were just walking they didn't react to my you know when you hit W with Evelyn yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You don't the time, yeah they didn't react at all to that when that was happening So and you could see the animations and odd things that they were doing that's probably weird. designed to just level up or yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever else yeah that's strange that's weird the decay you know it's, it is strange I will say though Naif it is good when you beat a Smurf and I think oh, I can is, only yeah. think of one instance in recent years where the, I think it was an enemy bot laner or, or jungler and they said early on oh I'm a Smurf blah 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 you guys are all rubbish on both teams or whatever else and I was and you know some people say they're Smurfs and mm. they're not right so I looked at the end and I could see they had like an 80% win They're rate really, or yeah. whatever else but they just had a very bad team and we managed to beat them That's so that felt good, yeah. good it does oh. happen you know they can't win every single game yeah no of course they can't yeah it's, it's still a team game of course um, but no I get that feeling when I beat Garen players that take Ignite up did one earlier it's just uh, look if my Mordekai is open and they take Ignite up then good luck it doesn't matter if you get that extra damage you are losing the lane and every time every time I so don't kill them dumb I write in all chat just please learn a lesson stop taking Ignite you take TP you oh, fight me and you get back but, to your base and you come back like a good yeah, boy yeah but that right? one person <laughs> you've taught a lesson to right there's a hundred million plus yeah, yeah. Counts, right in league whatever the number is these days so it's i gave up i i used to be like that it's like trying to teach people <laughs> lessons i was like I, I can't be bothered now there's too I many it, and there'll I, be too many other idiots that yeah. emerge in the future as well i talk so much shit in league i love it i'm proper i'm a mentalist when it comes to league of legends honestly but i've been i've been about 50 garen players with ignite now so hopefully hopefully it's cut it's going across europe spreading by the legendary Mordecai's a player that is beating these game players. Hopefully, it spreads and and they, and they stop doing it, mate. That's that's what you that's do my play name. a mean Mordecai. I do, yeah. I'm, I'm, I know how to play these game players. Look, like he beat me. I don't get too much into the league. Sorry, everyone, but I have to explain this. There was two fights. He, I killed him early on, and I was I was like one health after, and he was like, "Yeah, you just got lucky." And it's like, no, mate. I've played against you, scum, many times. Don't you worry. I know. I know how to play against you. Simple as that. Um, moving on. Smurfs. That was that was Smurfs. I got a little bit passionate about my Mordekaiser there. If anybody yeah. does, if anyone thinks they can one v one me in the top lane, and can beat my Mordekaiser, comment down. There won't be any comments in this video because no, that person doesn't exist. Simple. <laughs> Anyways, second topic. I think we covered Smurfs pretty well there. Uh, second topic yeah. is academy teams. I'm gonna let you give the context here because you know way more about it. Yeah. Whilst so again, I'll try and put the link in the description here. Um, I think. So a bit of context. When NLC launched last year, wait, do you, want, do you want to give context of the level? So LEC, NLC. Yeah. So in, in UK League of Legends now, there are three main tiers, right? Below LEC, which obviously XL Esports play in the top level of European League. You have UK. I won't talk about collegiate and uni stuff because it's slightly different. But you have UK EL, the sort of bottom tier. UK LC, middle tier, and then NLC top tier that's the those the, the two bottom tiers are uk only uk and ireland and then the top tier in uk scene is nlc that's uk and northern europe teams mixed in when it was all launched last year some of the uk teams that got invited into the nlc were allowed academy teams in the lower uk leagues right so teams like eminem gaming barrage they had their first teams in the NLC and then they had the academy teams in the UK LC, I think it was, right, the mid-tier. Why this has become a big talking point 
recently is and it's the article's dropped off my homepage, which is a bit annoying, but off the top of my head, M M Gaming were relegated from the NLC recently. And they dropped down to the UKLC, but the UKLC already had their academy team in there. And rules state you can only have ownership of one team. You can't have more than one team with the same owner in the same league. So what was going to happen was M M were given the right to sell their academy team slot. But what happened was the two teams, um, the, the top teams from the lower UKEL were annoyed because instead of having two slots to get into the UKLC, they'd only have one now because of Eminem's two teams selling their slot to an outside mm-hmm. source, right? Or they'd have to buy it from Eminem, which they'd say, oh, this isn't fair. Eminem actually did a really nice thing and just gave up their academy team slot, which is, you know, I commend them. A lot of orgs wouldn't have done that. So that two teams were able to come back up, uh, to come up, and I think Lucent and uh, Lucent came up as a new team, and Barrage um, requalified again. They mm-hmm. were relegated to the relegation series, and they've requalified again. So it's become a talking point. I did an article on it. Dreamhack, the organisers of NLC, they're going to talk amongst themselves, talk to the teams, and try and change the rules slightly. But I mean, it, it might not be too much of a bad thing in the future anyway because as I understand it Barrage are the only one with an academy team left in the UK so I think there might be a few others in the UK I can't remember now but it became a talking point right Nathan you've obviously got XL and Fnatic academy teams in the NLC but their first teams are in the higher tier LEC and that there isn't really a problem because LEC is franchised and you can't get relegated as such right so but it's we talk Interesting ab- talking point, I think. Yeah, we talk about it a little bit off stream and why I think that's not an issue, uh, and you already said it's not an issue, um, because Fnatic and XL, is because that's a clear route of how you get into the LEC, LEC, LEC I guess, is by mm. either absolutely smashing BTXL Fnatic on the main stage, which is European match at ma- uh, Masters, or by joining them teams, um, and then having the option to move into the LEC roster, which is very open um, for most teams anyway. Uh, so I think it needs to be there. But look, if, imagine if XL had a team in the UKLC and the UKEL, that would would have four League of Legends teams in every single like. I, there's like a, there's like a slight argument if I really want to make it. Okay, that's really good for League of Legends because we'd look after the roster in obviously in a professional manner. They'd get to deal with LEC players and LEC coaches mm-hmm. and stuff like that. It may be a really good learning experience. But is it just one unfair to the other teams because we're bringing in loads of different resources for just like a smaller, lower tier, way lower tier team? Um, not to be harsh on UKL, but these are you know these aren't the level of LEC and NLC players. Um, or is it? Yeah, is it not only unfair, but it just does it just unbalance the ecosystem by saying, look, we're going to give a tiny salary to these players. UKL, I don't think is is salaried at all. So are the other orgs going to be like, oh, players are going to turn around and say? Nah, if you don't sell me, I ain't playing. So now that ecosystem's kind of ruined. It can either it could backlash or it could either be super supportive. I don't know, but I definitely don't think the solution is um, having four League of Legends teams in representation, like some kind of representation in every single one. It's even it's talk from an organization point of view too. I can imagine it'd be quite difficult um, to manage them too because you're dealing with younger players. Um, a little bit less of a leash on them so if they something um, say something unprofessional they represent the excel brand just as much as an lec player would so like you yeah. can't it's a little bit what's the word it's a it's definitely a risk but at the same time that is that that would never be a thing really would it at all um but yeah i think it's a positive why nlc anyway to go back to my point is because there's at least a clear route into the lec which like i said yeah it's franchise there's no way to get into it um other than paying <laughs> 10 million <laughs> 10 million euros for a spot <laughs> which isn't open right now <laughs> I think there are some teams in the UKL that are salaried or it's a lot lower than NLC yeah. right? and, and top tier obviously there'll be different setups like I'm pretty sure Munster probably salary their players mm-hmm. just with their stature and everything but you're right Nath it's a lot lower level um, I mean you, that could segue into our third thing quite nicely um, on second chances yeah I'll just mention it and then I'll let you decide or not because there was there was a team in the UK EL which got picked up by Lucent previously Hive and there was a bit of a controversy with some of the players on there previously a couple of players had said some not very nice things some homophobic comments 
in a previous tournament and but they were allowed into the UKEL right and some people said oh they shouldn't have been allowed in like that that ban was supposed to be a ban um, UKEL organizers actually said they won't be allowed to in but then they were right but it brought up the topic of are people allowed second chances I'll try and link an article again uh, written by Meg, Meg, K, uh, Meg K, uh great Meg, uh, great writer <laughs> the great Meg <laughs> sounds like a, a, yeah I've got Megalodontus on the team and, uh, Meg did a freelance article for us but it's a good article on do people deserve second chances you know toxicity in esports when do people deserve ch second chances and when do they not deserve second chances so i don't know if you're happy to jump into that knife or if you still want to cover academy yeah let's let's first give up like do people dom in your yes or no answer deserve second chances let's let's preface this with context too of course mm. like look we, we don't want to jump in and say someone who's murdered someone in the scene deserves a second chance this is slightly different but as a general do you think people deserve second chances yeah definitely i'm i'm of the i'm of the um line of thinking of kind of treat others as you like to be treated and you know if i made a mistake and i think as long as someone shows remorse and apologize if they know they've done something wrong and they've apologized and it's like i'm sorry i've learned my lesson it won't happen again yeah i think they do deserve a second chance if it's someone that they don't really care about what they've done wrong then it's slightly different right they have to show remorse yeah it's i know it's not the same as being in court and so on <laughs> but you know you'll often hear of cases right where the judge says this person showed no remorse whatsoever. So they're not going to get a more lenient uh, sentence. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I think my... So, yeah. God, yeah, I come from a point that... Yes, I absolutely... Yeah, I think so. I, I agree with you, absolutely. Um, I think that the main factor is... And I just want to talk about cancel culture because I know it's such a buzzword at the moment. Everyone's talking about it without without context a lot of, a lot of the time. Is cancel culture... It's a weird thing that's happened with with the born, uh, I guess, the birth of social media. Um, mm. In terms of okay, if someone's on a wrongdoing, instead of letting them grow and improve and say sorry for it, we just want to get rid of them entirely. Which seems like, like a very strange thing because back in the day, um, if someone did something wrong, then it'd be okay. There'd be an outlash, but at the same time, there'd be a willingness of people that are going okay. Let's look at it from his side or her side or whatever. Um, and break it down in terms of okay how like was this a, an honest mistake there's there's a couple there's loads of different multiple things here like was it an honest mistake was it an outburst of anger like we're all humans at the end of the day look i i've said nasty things in league of legends <laughs> in all chat sometimes you know what i mean these aren't enough to me for me to get cancelled or whatever but i i i'm like any other human that has these outbursts but these are different situations in, in terms that they've affected or offended a group of people right that's why they're getting cancelled most of the time um, and they've said something pretty nasty, which, look, that's not a nice thing to say. This person should be punished, um, but how do, how do we go about punishing them? We need, we need like, a streamlined process. This shouldn't be just an open court to all of social media to pitch. It's like, um, is it The Dark Knight or is it Dark Knight Rises where there's... Uh, uh, Killian Murphy is, like, the is the judge and they're, they're judging the police officers. I don't know if you've ever seen a film, but it's like basically it, it, it gives them two options. Do you want to die or do you want to go walk on, walk on the ice? It's like this public hearing that is just created by like mobsters that yeah, get to pick. And I think like that's what it is at the moment. Um, it's like the Wild West out there. People deserve a second chance. Um, but you, you, look, there needs to be remorse. Of course there is. If someone's smiling and happy and doesn't give a single shit about what they've done, then yeah, no chance. You're not coming back any, any day of the week. That you're, you're never going to get a second chance ever. Um, it also needs to be, I think there needs to be a step of, I don't want to call it training, but a step of learning and improving. So if you've said a homophobic comic, then you have to go out and go, okay, I'm going to do a course or do something about learning about more about um, about what this is and, and the, I guess the people that I've affected with my comments. I think that's a must. You need to educate yourself on, on what you've on what you've done and why that word is. Because a lot of words right now that are super offensive is that so, is a word that I've grew up in school that was just said like as a as a normal thing. It's a mm. bad word, but a lot of the people, a lot of our generation, don't 
use it with the uh, I guess the context that comes with it. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, like malice and so on. Yeah, you know, when they... people used words when I was at school, it was just absolutely to try and be cool and just sound yeah. funny. Whereas they didn't realise pretty much what they were saying. Of course, yeah. Not excusing it, but no, cool. yeah, we're not we're not excusing it. But at the same time, you you have to give that context to it. We can't be yeah. as harsh as saying you've said a bad word. Simple as that. There's no other. You know, we're not going to look at it from any other angle. You have to, unfortunately. Mm. But the learning point is here is going okay. Like I've I've said bad words in the past, and people, which I really appreciate, have brought them up and said you shouldn't say that. And it's like it's not really that of a bad word, but they said you shouldn't say it because it affects this person or this or it, it does this and that. And I'm like, that's to that's totally fair. That's it educates me in a way that goes okay. I'm going to learn and improve by not saying that in future reference. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, and I think that's what that's what that's what we need to give the opportunity for people to do is if they've done something wrong, and this is just in the case of right now in saying something or saying saying a bad word basically that has affected um that has affected a group of people. Um, there's loads of other contexts we can give, but th that's the that's an example I think you need to show remorse, uh, which most people do uh, because they didn't mean any harsh way of saying it. Um, but also you need to educate yourself on the topic. Um, it's it's. But at the same time, let's give an example because I've seen examples of, of players that have kind of attacked players by having a deceased family member. That's different, isn't it? Because you're not saying you've targeted them for a reason. You know they've, they've had a loss or they've had a trauma in their life and you've targeted for that reason. So how do we approach them now? Do you know what I mean? Because like anyone, and this is looking at a different angle, everyone's going to be remorseful when people are attacking them. Do you know what I mean? But then... Yeah when it's all cooled down, which esports is really fucking annoying for doing, everything cools down after a while and people forget. Like I could kill someone and be like, oh, Nave, why you killed someone? My God, it'd be everywhere. Two weeks later, I'd be speaking to my mates again and people are like, oh, I've swear an article about you two weeks. Oh, no, it doesn't matter. I forgot about it now. You know, people forget so no, easily. People yeah, people forget, but I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was, it was a drastic example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know but what people, you mean. Yeah. People and move on that, so quickly. It raises you raise a good point, Nath, because it, it just shows how important context is, right? It depends what someone's done for me a second time. If they said something nasty, that's different to actually committing a crime, yeah. you know, a physical or what, a, a abuse or mental abuse or whatever it is, you know, then that's obviously worse. Raises the the subject of social justice. I think social justice can be good. I also think it can be very bad as well. It depends on what it is you, we've got this mob there's this mob mentality now you know cancel culture like you mentioned um and i'll give you an example right now if you were saying you couldn't get cancelled by saying something horrible in league of legends but then it depends who you are right you might get to a status in the future where you have a hundred thousand followers right so say you get to that point and then someone's got a screenshot of something you've said in solo queue because it ha i'll use this as an example this happened with caps yeah Right when he was originally signed to Fnatic, when he went up a tier from semi-pro level to Fnatic, or you know lower pro level to Fnatic, he was announced, and then a day or two, a few days later, people started seeing Haddo's tweet. Obviously, shout out to Haddo, one of the League of Legends UK Cno G's uh, a support player, who had as one of his pinned tweets just from ages ago, this chat. From Caps saying to Haddo, um, you don't want to annoy me, or something along this line, right? And then Haddo says something like, uh, well, what do you mean? And then Caps says, oh, I know people in esports, trust me, you won't uh, get a career in esports if I talk to the right people. And, and Haddo's just replying with lol, XD, <laughs> and all this. And Caps is like, mark my words, you, you won't get anywhere, I know people. Yeah, and gosh. then it came out, and Caps had to apologise, mm -hmm. Fnatic had to apologise and put a statement out. You know, it's crazy, isn't it? When you yeah. sometimes you can go from that lower level to famous or, you know, famous in our world in esports. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got to deal with um, ghosts and uh, skeletons from the past, yeah. right? Skeletons in your closet. So that's interesting, right? But people are ca capable of change. Again, Caps, you know, has he done things like that since? I haven't seen mm -hmm. anything. So he's learned his lesson. He's showed remorse. He apologised. We all move on, and I think most people thing, now, it? fans of Caps and G Two or Fnatic in the past, probably won't even remember that stuff, or you know, yeah. won't be really in their minds much. 
And that's the thing, yeah, is as long as they've learned from it and they don't do it again, because that's the thing, if if, you, if they've learned from it, but then they clearly do it again and again, then have they learned? No, clearly not, yeah, right? Because yeah. they're doing, they're continuing to, to, to do it. Um, that's that's where it's slightly different. Uh, we do need to make special cases though for, for some people that are just look, if they've, if they've made an honest mistake, then we need to be open in, in improving that. There's no, there's no benefit, right? Um, at this level of, of 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 in this sample UK League of Legends and getting rid of someone that said that said a bad word, right? There's no point of ruining someone's career because they've said a bad word. We need to give them an opportunity, but like like everything that needs context, like yeah, if they're not remorseful, mm. if they're not impro- not willing to improve and learn, then it's slightly different. Um, there's also you see it regularly now, like Ninja, uh, yeah. not Ninja, um, PewDiePie a few years ago yeah, used the yeah. N word on stream, right? I saw there was a Welsh streamer, a um, Dead by Daylight streamer, used to some racist blur, right? And then apologized. And but I've seen he's still streaming to a few thousand people, yeah. so I can't remember his name now. Again, I'll have to try and remember to put the article in the description, but this it does happen, it happens probably. It happens pretty damn frequently, right? Yeah. And then the games we follow and the games I follow, like League of Legends and um, Valorant and Rainbow Six now and so on, there were all these other games that I don't follow that closely, right? There was all that stuff from the fighting game community a few yeah. years ago that weren't really horrible harassment allegations and Evo, all that drama and everything. You know, it probably happens a lot. And not it's not exclusive to esports, right? This happens a lot of in the no, world of, of social no. media. What do you think the? I don't. Think this is we're definitely talking moving away from esports a little bit here. What do you mm. think the the issue is with these words? Because from my point of view, and we've already discussed it a little bit. How I grew up saying these words like they were normal. It's embedded mm. so much into our society, and it's starting to be removed a little bit, which is good. Um, and people are bringing it up into conversations with their friends and calling out friends for saying stuff, which is absolutely what what should be happen. What should be happening? Um, but why? like do these accidents happen is it because they're embedded in society and we're like i guess when we take a public stance we know not to say these words because they'll annoy people and sometimes it comes out right like do these people say it in private and then when it only comes out in public that's the first time it's it's been seen in public, yeah that's but they've actually thing. said it multiple times you know what i mean um yeah. that it's it's really hard to talk about because we don't really know you know what i mean we're not mm. like psychologists here we, we, we don't know that's a good <laughs> You know, this is a really good topic you're getting onto here, like a broader topic of, um, you know, is there like systemic racism or other underlying things that people think about and they just don't say it? You know, let's talk about that. Let's talk about this every now and then. Or you hear the F word, right? People using that, homophobic slurs and so on. They, they say it, they might say it to their friends or whatever off stream. And then you, the instances you hear of it in esports and gaming and with streamers is when they're having, usually when they're having a jokey time, being silly or loud or, yeah. um, you know, uh, yeah, just sort of like boisterous kind of thing. Or have been drinking, right? You could say, oh, a streamer was getting drunk on stream and then said the F or whatever. You know, it's not good. Yeah. Really, I, I'm. I'm not trying to be holier than thou, but I. I don't finish and use language that I don't use on stream and stuff. Course, yeah. To my wife, or obviously not with my children. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, swearing and stuff. But you know what I mean, uh, Nath. But then I'm 35 as well, and a lot. Of, I'm not excusing streamers that use these words, but if you're a teenager or early 20s, you haven't done that mature, and you haven't learnt as many life lessons yeah. right you may be more inclined to make mistakes when you're younger as a rule as a in general yeah you know I, you mentioned systemic racism and this may be a really deep topic for what for what this podcast is about but i think it's a good topic because didn't the uk the uk basically come out and said whatever who reports it basically said they've done research and they found that there is no systemic racism in the oh, UK. I read something about that. Yeah, it was yeah. the government, wasn't it? I think and they did a report on yeah, that. And they've published that they, they found that there isn't, which seems absurd to me because it's it's like it's like we spoke about how we know these ELO boosts and size exist. I'm sure yeah. as I know when I was screwed up, I knew a local a local drug dealer. 
I like we all people around my local area talked about him like he was a normal thing. It's like how do I know and the police don't know? Do you know what I mean? The police clearly know. So when it comes to the racism thing, I kind of put it under the same the same bucket in the sense that we all know it exists, but we don't want to like suffer with the re- reality of it. If that makes sense, we don't want to do anything about it. Like, and that, I think that's what the government is is kind of saying here. Um, my issue with it, uh, and I come from, I'm going to use one example here, and I don't want to speak for Genj, um, but Genj is, uh, plays for England rugby. Um, rugby's a very pff, posh white man sport, if we're being honest, right? Um, and that's and that's how it's and how it's been for a while. Um, I think the, the audience that ro- watches rugby in the, in the UK is like 80% white, male 30 plus right um so when genj does anything bad on tv or anything remotely bad he's called a thug but it's never ever if he has a dealing with an, another white player it's never the white player's fault regardless what happens right um there was a and i think i linked it to you but there was an article uh was it the daily star that came out and uh I linked basically it to you yeah yeah you did yeah you did yeah and i, sh- <laughs> and I showed genj and he, he wasn't happy about it but we won't get into that um how it was all all the quotes were all against Gens. There were never, there was never one, there was never two sides to it. Because to, to give context, two players, okay? All mm. you see on camera, I'm only going to explain what you see on camera because I've heard from Genji's story, I've heard from the other side's story. Like, let's fuck that. We just talk about what we see in camera and we break it down. Two people, mm. Gen seems like he's speaking to some player. The player turns around and goes to lunge at him. If I'm giving that context alone, who is it more in the wrong, right? Instead, mm. they flip it on and go, Genj clearly saying some really bad things. The other person tries to retaliate and swing. Any other world where that's two white people, the person who swings is the person in fault there. Every single time, every single yeah. time, regardless what you've said, because we don't know what they've said. A proper journalist would have known that, right? You can't, you can't speculate on what's been said. You can't give any more context mm. to what you don't know, um, and you can give more context or more backing to that as a journalist yourself. Um, but no proper journalist would do that, and no proper journalist would then go on to to only show the quotes from uh, bad press against Gent, right? There's other comments yeah, saying like, "Ah, oh, Gent has never had a red card in his life. Why are we Why are we calling him a thug?" There's ne- never anything like that, and it was pretty fifty fifty if you read the comments yourself, which not a lot of people do, unfortunately. And then the title of the the article was Gent shits himself which was taken from one of the tweets from a from a from a fan from a rugby yeah, fan so, so you're taking a rugby fan's tweet and put it under headline of your of your of your of your daily star article seems pretty strange to me and maybe i don't know enough about journalism but i just came off watching richard lewis, richard lewis's video yeah you can you can i i sometimes right if if people in the uk league of legends community are talking about something and someone makes a particularly interesting tweet I will sometimes use what they've um, said, paraphrase it, put it in single quote marks. And then obviously when I'm in the article, I'll say one person said, or, you know, Joe Bloggs of Team X or Y said this, right, to show you what I've done. But yeah, I wouldn't, I I don't really do that with, I don't know, people I don't know. You know, I'll only take it usually from someone that, uh, you know, is in the community sometimes not sometimes it's that tweet can if they can capture really well what a lot of other people are thinking yeah then that's good but it yeah. sounds to me like daily star have picked one throwaway thing oh again shit, shit himself yeah. and it's not it's very like, um he kept he kept a couple of quotes and it was all negative but what do you think is i'm going to pitch it to you because i'm going to i'm going to give my answer first and you may agree you may disagree but give your honest thoughts yeah. okay. what do you think the most important value um moral or value to uphold is for, that you expect from a journalist what is their first priority in my opinion is to be unbiased that's that's my first thing but you may answer differently accuracy Got you. for me and w- which falls into that unbiased as well yeah, yeah being yeah, objective is important but if you're a, you can be objective and inaccurate if you yeah. haven't researched properly right you think you're being objective Oh, but I've been, I've been back. I've gone to all these yeah. sources. <laughs> yeah, but one of these sources is wrong. What they're saying is wrong. Yeah, that right? makes sense. But then, so for me, accuracy is important. But you're right, bias is very important as well. But accuracy, from what I've learned over the years, is so important. I sometimes get volunteer writers saying, you know, I've written something, and I've said to them, "This, have you checked this stat? No. Uh, Where did you get it yeah. from? Oh, I think it's all right." You can't think no, it's all yeah. right when you write an article or do a video. You have to be 
certain. And if you're not certain, then you can say rumours suggest or something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. No, that's fair. No, I think I uh, I probably agree. I didn't even think about it, actually. That totally ran off my head. Um, I think I, I like, look, journalists, I've had bad dealings with journalists, I have a good dealing with journalists, but I feel like the group that we're in right now, I, I respect them as all quite very good journalists. Um, yeah. I somewhat sometimes look at them as like the heroes of our space because they're the ones, I have to rely on these people though, because if they don't, then nobody else will to call out the wrongdoings. And they have to do it because they're the ones with these big platforms, right? They're the ones that get published. Yeah, we're publish responsible. It. Yeah, yeah. And that, that weight, that's a lot of weight on your shoulder. Mm. Just a bit of context for people watching this. Yeah, Nathan and I are part of a group of a few other content creators, journalists in there. And it's just nice to chat and sound off. Um, don't worry, we don't do, you know, I've heard of some journalists out there that all team up and do little heat pieces and things together. <laughs> it's nothing like that. Yeah. It's all very relaxed. And it's, uh, we don't always chat about Oh, we, uh, we had to talk about journalism. We chat yeah. about football, which <laughs> yeah. Nathan's uh, distress. We chat about football sometimes, don't we, and everything. So, uh, yeah, it's good. It's good to be part of these communities, you know. I'd like to grow. I thought about making a journalist discord. I, I think that would be quite nice. But then there are some heated rivalries in journalism as That's well. Sure. I'm lucky I don't really have any of that <laughs> yeah. in the UK. But... Rivalries are good, though, I think, to, to an extent. They're, yes. they're healthy. They keep people going. Um, to an extent but yeah like I, I looked at these and we're talk, talking a bit more about journalists now to, to kind of wrap up but I think that yeah I, I looked at these journalists and, and hope that I can rely on them regardless of being a friend or not or them hating me to make a really good piece and, and cover both sides right and, and, and make I think that what a journalist should do is publish something and then it's kind of up to unless it's something very clear that's that's one sided and you shouldn't be able to think another way I think it should be left to mostly um the uh, the reader's interpretation, right? You should be able mm -hmm. to okay. If there's been a beef on Twitter, you should be able to read both sides. And maybe there's clearly one answer, maybe there's clearly not, and kind of make your own judgment. But unfortunately, like we live in a day and age where getting clicks is hard, um, and more publications mm -hmm. have to use these clickbait titles to get people right. And what I hate, mate, and maybe you can relate. I hate it. And Twitter have changed yeah. quite a bit now. People only read the headline at the top, the article these days. I know they it. don't click. And I'll give you an example, right? Um, so, uh, yeah, I agree. Show, don't tell is really important, Nath, right? I won't say uh, I've done guest lectures for esports journalism students. been very lucky enough to have done that. And I love, I was always taught show, don't tell. So mm -hmm. if you've got a story about uh, um, ESL 1 Birmingham, right, saying, oh, this is uh, a popular esports event, like well attended, blah, blah, blah. If you use the headline, you know, ESL breaks records for a Dota event at ESL One Birmingham, you know, or it, it pulls in whatever it was, three hundred thousand viewers, blah blah blah. That tells you it's big. You don't have to say it's big if you put a number in. Yeah. You're showing the reader, and then they can make their mind up. Ah, oh, three hundred thousand. Uh, yeah, not as big as uh, another event. Uh, those figures, by the way, double check. Uh, <laughs> just off the top of my head, I didn't remember three hundred thousand in there for some reason, but. Um, yeah, absolutely, Nath. And sometimes, you know, I've done articles. I did one the other day that I thought was good, important topic, got good retweets, good likes. Didn't get many views, like at all. And then other, we did a blooming April Fools thing the other day. Shout out to Peter Wellman who wrote this April <laughs> Fools article. Nine and a half thousand impressions. Really. Yeah. That's more than a lot of art, uh, articles we get yeah. on a normal month. So I don't know what happened there. It might have got picked up by a, a roundup site or a tweet, but people found it fun. We got Kieran, we got your uh, uh, boss at Excel with it because he, he tweeted, to, oh, I got halfway through and thought it was all true. Yeah, and I yeah. read this line, for God's sake, or whatever. Like, it's, you know, That was just a laugh. I always try and do one April Fool's article every year. We did it about AI bots, uh, uh, a League of Legends uni team. <laughs> found out to be AI bots kind of thing. It just, yeah, Peter had the idea and it got a few people. So yeah, that oh, was a fun. fun day, I, we, the spokesperson in there, we put, I put his name as John Connor. From oh the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the AI, all that stuff. Yeah, it's just silly. But anyway, I'm going on a tangent. <laughs> no, it's, it's a fun day April Fool's. But no, yeah, I think we, we come to a, an agreement on what journalists should provide. And yeah, I, I can imagine it's a lot yeah. of weight, but you're the saviors of our scene most of the time because we rely on you and you to not having any bias and luck if your best friend is the CEO of, uh, is the CEO of the large corporation and, and they've done something wrong you stop you know you don't stop being friends with them there and then but you, you put that friendship aside and write an unbiased piece 
Um, it's really hard. I've had to do that a few times, and it's that is one of the reasons why it's hard to make proper friends in the scene. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. Nath, it's good to be mates with you. You haven't. <laughs> You're a shining example, right? You haven't done anything wrong that I, I know of. So if I went good, on a killing right? spree tomorrow and said, Don, please don't write an article about it, please. And you'd be like, sorry, no, got to do, got to do what i got to do. Excel social yeah. media manager. <laughs> yeah, no, no. But for the most part, people are nice and you get along with yeah. them, right? And then there's a few ones where, oh, this has happened. Like, now I've got to do this thing. Like, the whole um, gross gore getting banned on Twitch or the more abuse allegations coming out like I've had quite a good rapport with him over the years right he finds some of my articles my light hearted articles quite funny I had to I had to write yeah. it you know I was the first one to break that mm. thing when the when the stuff went up on live stream files and all this and that and then there's a few other articles a few other publications that have done it um, yeah I have to sort of condemn what he's done Right, I can't stand by those allegations. It's part of the job. It is, yeah. Yeah, shout out to all our journalists out there. eh? (laughs) But like, I know, I'll I'll leave it there. I was about to say, um, you'd have to be careful sometimes being friends with journalists because if you say certain things and leak things, that where do these bloody sources come from at the end of the day? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And listen, we we talk about things in our group, and um, I respect being. You know, journalists will find out things in advance all the time. Some of them will just write anything they hear. (laughs) Others will maintain professionalism and, you know, like, oh, thanks for letting me know. Can I get the exclusive on that then? You know, sometimes I'll be a bit cheeky and say, oh, can I get an exclusive? Or, you know, they might give you an interview and blah, blah, blah. Other times you'll hear a rumour that's so big, you just have to sort of... And if you hear it from someone else as well, that's the other thing, right? Yeah. Then, I, then I'll go back to the original source and say, look, I know we're friends. What you've told me, I've actually heard from someone else by chance. Any, you know, I would have yeah. written that anyway. And then you have to have the difficult conversation. Oh, please, can you not write it yet, Don? But it's like, yeah. well, it's in, if someone else has written a bit about it, then I can't ignore it, you know? And it's you tough, do have it? to write what's in the interest. It depends what it is, right? Yeah. If it's, oh, we're going to sub out a player... Uh, or something in a in an academy team it's like that's not the hugest thing in the world mm. you know if it's something else it depends what it is yeah of course know? it is yeah if it's a bit more personal yeah. then yeah no i get it I get, yeah. I get it i get it but no i think we've done we're 52 minutes now um or under a bit over i'm not too sure um but no i, I think we covered the topics pretty well we we i think covered smurfs and academy teams quite quick but i think second chances was always going to be the beefy topic here always 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 um, yeah, we, we had we were going to touch on um, the Me Too movement, but I think that was a little bit too beefy for today, and uh, maybe not one to bring up now that it's quite down a little bit um, because it's not fun to talk about a lot of the time, uh, and a lot of people went through you know a lot of difficult traumatic experiences. Um, that isn't always fun to bring up and remind everyone off again, you know. Uh, you know, when we should talk about that, Nath, I, I reckon would be a good idea. One year on, right? Because yeah. this all happened last summer, mm-hmm. right? We could say one year on, what has the industry or what have people learned or how what's changed, changed since then? Yeah. That'd be interesting. Yeah, Jack, I agree. Because things that, yeah. have changed. You know, there are examples I can use where I've changed my actions. And yeah, things. No, of course, yeah. How I think about things, you know. Yeah it's, it's, so, yeah, it's a healthy part of growing, isn't it, as a human? Um, we have this, we're blessed with this skill to evolve and grow and change, <laughs> right? We're not yeah. just predatory. We're not robots. No, right? we make, instinct animals. We all make yeah. mistakes. No, it's been fun. Um, cool. Yeah. Hopefully, guys, you enjoyed that. Um, Dom, do you want? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, Dom did the intro today because I feel a little bit dopey. So, Dom, you can do the outro again today. How okay, that? great. Thanks, everyone for watching this uh please like and subscribe these have been well liked these videos please follow nathan on social media he's so active on social media please do please do i need followers and i will say i was going to say this at the start and i forgot to this is the first recording i've done with my new kda earphones i ordered i like this is sponsored guys please go click the link in below uh hashtag ad uh make sure to no it's not it's not use code dumb with my own hard earned (laughs) money i was going to say at the start as well if you hear me sort of breaking into song every now and then it's not my fault it's just because i'm inspired no but they're lovely they're they're nice in it i've needed new ear i've had apple earbuds for ages and Mm. it's just i needed new ones anyway this is supposed to be an outro not a waffle (laughs) 
So thanks for watching, everyone. Any final words from you, Nate? No, yeah. Stay safe, everyone. Um, look, it's April 5th right now. Um, April 12th is when we lock down eases here in the UK. And then is it May 17th where eases a lot more. And then mm. June 12th when it basically, or June 24th, I'm not too sure, when it's basically over. So stay safe, everyone. Look after yourself. Um, we're nearly there. Look, if you've, if you've, mm. most of you have gotten through a year of lockdown now. So just wait, wait a couple more months, and um, that's an achievement. We all need a gold medal, I think, from Boris. We all need something. We need some kind of uh, reward here for surviving one year yeah. of lockdown, right? <laughs> um, but no, stay safe, everyone. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in another month. <laughs> we do our next episode. <laughs> yeah. Bye, bye, everyone. Cheers, mate.